Welcome to a new season of Rooted. We're in beautiful Sedona, Arizona in the Red Rocks geology looking for mystical energy vortices. Actually, we're on a roadside in Milford, New Jersey. We're here in this extremely dry, rocky cliffside habitat because this is one of the best places to see prickly pear cactus, New Jersey's only native cactus species. There's a little bend in the Delaware River here, so the aspect of these bluffs is southwest. It gets the hottest sun of the day, and so plants that are adapted to these cliff faces, to this very gravelly soil, are thriving, including our cactuses here. We're gonna come back in a couple months because prickly pear cactus and flower is absolutely spectacular. If you could be here 200 million years ago, you'd be in an alluvial fan. Flash floods bring boulders and pebbles off of the Appalachian Mountains to the Northwest. You move up in the layer cake, and you've got just siltstones, clays, muds. We're in like a shallow water body shifting of the times. We're back at the bluffs. It's June, it's hot, it's humid. It's gonna be mid 90s today. Prickly pear is loving it. It's flowering, it has new pads. The new pads actually have these tiny little leaflets on it but they're very transient. They'll drop off and that's where the spines and the glochids will be. The glochids are these really fine hairs that get stuck in your skin and they're really irritating and they're almost, they're like so small, they're almost impossible to see. And I scrape them out with a sharp knife. Some other people put like rubber cement on and peel them off. Uh, they're super annoying, but it's all part of the cactus's defense mechanism. It's defending these big fleshy pads because these pads, these altered stems, hold water for the cactus. And they store water really effectively because they don't transpire during the day. They don't open their pores for gas exchange to bring in carbon dioxide during the daytime. They do that at night and then they store it as malic acid and they use the malic acid to photosynthesize during the daytime. So cactus are supremely adapted for really arid habitats. <laughs> Cactus are almost exclusively found in the Americas, and it's believed that they originated in South America, radiated up through the Southwest, the Southeast, and this one species, prickly pear, made it all the way up to the Northeast by specializing on habitats like these cliffs here, and dunes along the shore, and along the Great Lakes. There's a phenomenon known as plant blindness, where people, they don't really perceive plants, they just sort of see green, or maybe they don't notice plants at all. But plants tell the story of a place, and cactus is expressing the story of this place in its very form, in its very shape. Cactus would only be found here. If you want to understand place, if you want to be rooted on the earth that you live on, you can look to plants to interpret the story and lead you towards the history of the places that you inhabit. <laughs> <laughs> 